All right, so the next part is the most important bit, which is the E. coli sample. So you're going to have a bottle like this. You'll have, either have a label that asks for the site, the date, and you'll just fill all of that stuff out. There will be a pill at the bottom of this bottle, and you want to make sure when you're filling this bottle up with river water that the pill doesn't get lost. If it does, just put a note at the bottom, but don't skip the bottle if you accidentally lose the pill. So you're going to uncap it, try and avoid touching the rim. And so you're going to watch where the river is flowing. So you want to go hold the bottle against the current so that the water flows into the bottle. It ensures that it won't, the pill won't leave. So you're going to fill it up to about where that label hits, just below the bottom of the lip of the cap. And then you're just going to screw that cap on. Make sure you're labeling everything because if you're collecting more than one sample and you don't label it, we won't know which site it came from. So depending on your site, you'll either have one bottle for fresh water or two bottles for the brackish water sites. It'll be E. coli or E. coli and Enterococcus. You want to make sure this bottle is sealed on tightly. Sometimes the lip of the bottle gets caught and you want to make sure it is fully sealed and is not leaking. Then you are going to pack this in your cooler full of ice. The ice is really important because it keeps the E. coli from multiplying and we only want to be testing what is happening in the river, not what's happening in the bottle.